everyone, this is Derek, and in this video, we're going to look at finding the present value of a deferred annuity. Um, so a deferred annuity, it's it's like our present value annuities, the ones we were just looking at where we have a chunk of money, you know, we hit the lottery, and, and it's going to pay out over time. <clears throat> um, but with a deferred annuity, what's going to happen is we're going to postpone getting those payments for some amount of time. So maybe I got a chunk of money but I'm in my 50s and planning on retiring in another 10 years or so. So I don't, I don't want the payments now. Um, I want those payments to happen later. So that's the idea of deferring them. Uh, so our formula has pretty much all the same players we've been using for these last few sections. Um, the one additional one right here is going to be K. And so this is the number of periods that it is deferred. So you have to be a little bit careful with the periods deferred versus the um what that can feel like so if we say we we're going to get quarterly payments and we deferred it for two years we deferred eight payments eight periods eight payments so not the two years it's not that it's just deferred for two years it's how many times would you've gotten paid in those two years so that's the only new piece and then everything else you know again the formula is in a little bit different shape um but it's all the same stuff we've been working with Okay, so this goes, a business has been involved in a lawsuit that they've lost in court. The judge has ordered the money to be put in escrow during the appeal. Uh, this is to guarantee that the plaintiff will have, be able to receive the judgment if the company loses the appeal. So the plaintiff has been awarded quarterly payments. So we got quarterly, so our M is going to be four um, of $12,000 for 16 years. So the payments are twelve grand. And our time is going to be for 16 years. It was agreed by the judge that both parties, um, or and both parties, that an estimated time for the appeals process would be about three years. So I'm just going to underline that. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, if the money is worth 3.5% compounded quarterly, we already got that. So the R is 0 0.035. How much did the judge order the company to put into the annuity today? So putting it in today would be a present value. So that's what we're looking for at the start of the appeals process. So the idea is we're going to have these three years that we're going to put some money away. And then if they lose the case, they're going to, for the next 16 years, make these quarterly payments of $12,000. If they win the case, then they get to keep the money. But so how much money do we have to put in here today to make it in three years, they can start taking out these $12,000 payments for 16 years. So that's what we're trying to work out. And then, um, oh, I should also find our two calculated values. I keep forgetting to do that. So our N, that is gonna be our total number of payments. So that's not the three years, right? That's the 16 years we would have payments for. So it'd be 16 times four. So that will be 64 total payments. And then our interest rate um, is, where'd it go? This 0.035 divided by four. And that would be um, 0.00875. So there's our I. And then we have one more thing we have to find, and that's this three years. So that's this deferred. And remember in our, um, grab this back for a second. Uh, we had this last constant K, which is the number of periods deferred. So here's where we want to not mess it up. It's deferred for three years, but that's not the number of periods. So the number of periods is like the same as would be like the number of payments. So in three years quarterly, that would make 12 payments. So our K in that case is 12. Uh, so now I'm going to use that formula. I'll take all this, get that set up and come back. Okay, so here's um, the formula with everything plugged in. And um, then again, it's just a matter of trying to get that into the calculator. If I was doing this on a scientific, I would probably go one minus this to that and then divide, multiply it by this and then multiply by that over there. Uh, if you do all that correctly, assuming I did all that correctly, here's what I got. 